So what is it that the pros actually do? Well, to work that one out, we need to look at a full calendar of racing. Some pros will race 60 to 90 days a year, riding one, two, or maybe even all three Grand Tours. Other pros may race a little less, 40 to 70 days, mainly built up from single day classics or smaller four to 10 day stage races throughout the season. Many riders will compete over the flatter, less hilly terrain, whilst a large number of them will be competing in the brutal hilly mountains. So answering the question, what is it that the pros actually do? It isn't really that straightforward. They do a wide range of everything. However, there is one thing in common, the duration. Most professional cycling events are from four to six hours in length or 180 to 260 kilometers. A pro therefore needs to train for good endurance over a wide variety of terrain. Some riders will be good at sprinting and will need to add in extra attention for this in their training, whilst others will be good at climbing and will therefore need to focus on this more. Some riders' roles will be to work for the team and they will rarely race for the win themselves. Therefore, their training needs to cater for the demands and needs that this entails. How much do the pros need to train? Well, that will largely be governed by the period they are in within the season. Whilst races don't count as training, they do have a training effect on the body. Therefore, during busy periods, a pro may not need to include much extra training at all, with the focus instead being on recovery. The flip side of this is that, of course, at some point, they will really need to put in the hours on the bike. It isn't at all rare to see back-to-back -back weeks of 30 to 40 hours of on-the-bike training throughout build periods either between blocks of racing or throughout the winter periods. Do you remember Chris Room's Monster Month on Strava, where he clocked up around 140 hours and 4,400 kilometers? Now, whilst that is a monster month by anyone's standards, it does highlight the sheer workload needed by a professional rider to endure a season of racing at the absolute top level. So why do the pros even need to train? Surely they can afford to sit back and relax after all. They are super talented. Perhaps I just mean hardworking and dedicated. I'm not doubting the talent, but there's no way anyone got to the top level without putting in the hard work at some point. Back-to-back -back training days help improve consistency of performance. They improve recovery times and resilience to fatigue. The intervals within these sessions will help to build the strength and aerobic fitness needed to propel the bike at such high intensity. Plus, repeated intervals help develop resistance to muscle fatigue on the bike. So where do the pros train? Now, therein lies the beauty of this sport. Within reason, and at certain times of the year, a pro can train almost anywhere, like in the mountains. There will be times of the year when a pro will need to go to a specific place to train. Maybe it will be an altitude camp or a recon of the Belgian classics. Maybe you need flatter roads for sprint training, or if you're a climber, you need to head to the mountains for some serious uphill gravity-defying intervals. But, on the whole, a pro can afford a little flexibility when it comes to choosing where they want to be based for any ongoing training they have scheduled. One thing you will find though, is that a pro will almost always head for warmer, drier weather whenever possible, because who really wants to get wet and cold when they don't really need to? One thing's for sure is these pros sure do do a lot of cycling. But do they do anything else? That does depend. Some riders will swear by extra strength and conditioning sessions in a gym or a sports school. This certainly appears to be popular when on the comeback from an injury or even when trying to prevent injuries and build muscle. Others perhaps choose some extra fitness by looking at swimming, running, or even cross-country skiing. It is rare to find a pro that doesn't have at least one other outlet for their fitness fix, but it is almost certainly included into a well thought out, structured schedule. Oh. Oh. The pros clearly train long, hard hours, but does that mean that we should? I don't think it does. Unless you are planning to ride a seven day sportif or something similar, it probably isn't worth your time attempting to train like a pro. Instead, take the principles that we've addressed here today and scale them down and apply them to your own cycling. That way you'll have a well thought out structured training program and you will benefit from it. Hopefully this video has given you a better understanding as to why the pros train in the way they do. For six sportif mistakes to avoid, click down here, but give us a thumbs up before you do.